from Kent's Hill, Maine. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the GCN, GCN Show. Welcome to the GCN Show, brought to you by Wiggle. This week we talk gravel, the super wheel, Russian potholes, and we look back at the Amstel Gold Race. Got loads of new stuff this week, haven't we? So in Tech of the Week we've got a new shade, new wheels, new tyres, and amazingly, new beer as well. And there's a new giveaway, more prizes for you to win at home. Mm, as well as all that shiny new stuff, We've got all your old favourites as well. New and old, new and old. This week in the world of cycling, we saw the first ever women's cycle race take place in Saudi Arabia. 47 women competed over a 10 kilometer course in the city of Jeddah. And when you consider that women were only allowed to publicly ride bikes back in 2013, this is a small but quite hopeful step forward for a nation that is quite conservative. Yeah, we also saw that if you spent seven hours in the breakaway at Amstel Gold, then you can have quite a lot of food for your team. Because Lawson Craddock from EF Education First did that and actually burnt, get this, close to 7,000 calories yeah. in the Amstel Gold Race, which equates to about 27 Big Macs. Whoa, that's a lot, isn't it? Although I think I would go for 15 Big Macs and leave the rest for chips, chocolate, and beer. Yeah, just divide it off a bit, yeah. Uh, we also learned this week that gravel is the new road. Or is it? Now, there were several things in the past few days that have led to that, the catalyst for that kind of discussion. First off, Mavic, well, they've launched an all-road range of products. We had the Trobro Leon, the French race that's uh, run on a lot of farm tracks. That got more exposure than most UCI 1.1 races. And then the Canyon Belgian Waffle Ride in yeah. California. That's one of the best events on the calendar. That does look like a really cool yeah. event, doesn't it? I think the trend is clear. Starting with the race, as you've already mentioned Trobo Leon, but then we've got Strada Bianca, of course, which we talked about on the show a few weeks back. That has become one of the biggest and most anticipated races of the season by riders and spectators alike, even though it's only in its 12th edition this year, wasn't it? Yeah, and the, the white road stages of the Giro d'Italia, they're always really hotly anticipated. Game well. Wevelgum, they added yeah. some gravel last year in the form of those plug strats, didn't they? Yeah, Omloop Heck Hardland in Belgium, last year's podium, Mathieu van der Poel first, Wout van Aert, third. Yeah, and even close to home, we've got the Rutland Melton Sea Classic here in the UK, and that uses a whole load of farm roads too. Yeah, well that started out in 2005, and is now one of the biggest UK domestic events. Believe it or not, Matt actually podiumed at that inaugural event before it got big. It was actually one of the biggest inaugural events in the UK. We also had the inaugural Australian Gravel Bike National Championships, and I must admit I can see other countries following suit there. Yeah, you'd have thought so, wouldn't you? Mm. I must admit, I do like watching all the races that we've just been talking about. I like the spectacle that you get from the dust or the dirt. I like the extra degree of bike handling that's required over the gravel roads. And I also like the fact they look quite epic and retro in some ways. Well, if it's retro, can gravel really be the new road? Or are we just harking back to like a bygone era? I mean, before the advent of asphalt. Well, it is a valid point, isn't it? I see where you're coming from there. Because we know that the road riders as a pro don't really adapt their bikes much for the gravel no. bike. And do that, they just put slightly bigger tires on perhaps. But on the other side of the coin, Gravel bikes are becoming quite a big thing amongst the general public. But when you look at them, I can't help but wonder whether actually they're not too dissimilar in design to the mountain bikes that we used to race on back in the mid 90s. Yeah, bikes with no suspension whatsoever and just clearance for bigger tires than road bikes, basically. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the difference with gravel bikes is that generally you adopt drop handlebars, but on the other side of the coin there, John Tomac, the legend that yeah. he is, he raced with drop handlebars on his first mountain bike, didn't he? Mm. The thing is though, mountain biking has changed dramatically since that Tomac era. And I'm wondering whether gravel bikes have kind of just filled a void that was left behind. Yeah, I know what you mean, but with the introduction of things like uh, disc brakes, it means that new gravel bikes have far more versatility than the mountain bikes that me and you were using back in the day. And also, many of them can accept standard road wheels, but with different tyre choices, so CX tyres or slicks, and many can also accept 650B wheels, but with fatter tyres. Yeah, so and I actually did uh, some riding and a video using some gravel bikes with exactly those wheel options. And it was quite interesting because you do then think you can have one bike at home that ticks 
a lot of boxes. And there's no mm. doubt there's loads of competitive or non-competitive, should I say, events out there at the moment that accommodate gravel bikes, not least the Canyon Belgian <laughs> Waffle Ride that you talked about earlier. That thing's got 40 miles of gravel dirt tracks in it. Well, there's the Dirty Kanza as well. Yeah. And somebody from that GCN team is going to be riding that. They Catherine, are. who runs the social media, is going to be riding that event. And guess what? 206 miles, just gravel. It is, isn't it? Last year's event, though, was won by Matt Stevens, wasn't it? It wasn't me. I, no. wasn't, I wasn't available. No, I think no, people could that. guess that you didn't win a 200 mile gravel event then. No. There's also the fact that the Dirty Kanda is only 13 years old and in the first edition, 34 people turned up. This year, it's going to be 2,200. Wow. And the Eroica events as well, they're getting increasingly more popular year on year. But it's not just about more and more events, is it? Because gravel, really, it's becoming, well, a proper thing, isn't it? It is, and I think there are three reasons for that. Firstly, it's far quieter and more peaceful when you venture off-road, isn't it? Secondly, you get a heightened sense of kind of accomplishment and exploration. And thirdly, there is a safety issue there as well, isn't there? Mm. Well, I know where you're heading down because roads are getting far more busier and drivers, let's face it, are getting more distracted. Yeah, I mean, we're not shirking the issue here. We know that there's a responsibility amongst us as cyclists yeah. to kind of educate and help the situation out there on the road. But the fact is, sometimes it's quite nice to just venture off road and not worry at all. It is. Plus, there is the fact that if you want a gravel ride to be social, it most definitely can be, can't it? Oh, oh here, here is Catherine. Yeah, Catherine, come on. Um, I bet you're, you've got to be looking forward to Dirty Kanza. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, I'm pretty nervous. I think we should get, we should get oh, come on, in come and sit on the shot shuffle, here. Shuffle up, mate, just a little bit. Hi, Catherine, how are you doing? Hey. All right. Good sorry, to see you. Sorry to get you in, but we've been talking about whether the fact, uh, whether gravel is the new road, and you'd be in a good position to tell us because you must have been doing a lot of training for the Dirty Kanza. Well, I've certainly been riding my gravel bike a lot more than my road bike, so that will probably give you a bit of an insight to your question, yeah. Yeah. Do you reckon it would be a good idea if we, in the next few weeks, did a special Ask GC Anything gravel special. Do you reckon you'd be up for it? Yeah, I reckon that'd be good. I think that good is stuff. a great idea. Yeah, one of us with Catherine answering your questions and all things gravel because she has built up a lot of experience on the gravel bike over the last few months. So leave all your questions in the comments section down below. and We'll do that, what, in the next couple of weeks? Yeah, tell us about your favourite gravel rides, where you like to ride, whether you like to ride in baggy clothing or lycra as well. And if you don't really fancy riding on gravel, tell us why. We want to hear both sides of the argument. We do, don't we? Uh, right, so the answer from Catherine is yes, gravel is the new road. Road, Matt? No, I don't think gravel's the new road. I think it's the new gravel. Nice answer, Matt. Typical Matt answer. <laughs> I think it's just a nice addition and option for some different riding when you want it. Bottom line is, it's good fun. It's now time for cycling shorts. Can you reinvent the wheel? Now, many people have tried it, but Simon Chan claims to have done it with what he calls the super wheel. It is power assisted, but not through any kind of battery or motor, but rather it uses the rider's weight. Now this technology has been four years in development and they've been very tight-lipped over exactly how it works in that time, but they've given GCN some exclusive insight. The system works on the storage of action-reaction force caused by the weight of the user in the upper section of the spring mechanism continuously during rotation, i.e. when the wheel is rotating in the clockwise direction, the mechanism starts to compress the springs from the nine to three o'clock of the rotation, and the springs decompresses from the three to nine o'clock of the rotation. It works like a lever mechanism, uh, using the center as the pivot, and then this converted energy will be used to decrease the frictional force in the opposite side of the wheel, and therefore facilitate the rotation. The current prototype provides around 30% assistance and is quite heavy, and that is something that they're actually working on. But the production model, they reckon, will provide upwards of 50% assistance, which is pretty remarkable. Mm. I have to say that despite our explanation, I'm still none the wiser in my own head mm. because that's, I'm not intelligent complex enough stuff. to understand something this complex. But if it is going to work, it could be quite revolutionary, yeah. couldn't it? Because although e-bikes are relatively green, they still need charging, there is still a battery there that will need to be disposed at some point. But this, it's about as green as it 
it's going to get, isn't it? Mm. But it's going to be something else that the UCI are probably going to have to check as well. Yeah, that's very true. Uh, right, back onto conventional wheels now and a new world record, which somehow we missed when it was set a couple of weeks ago. Uh, back then, Dr. Mitch Anderson set a new 24-hour record for an outdoor circuit where he averaged over 37 kilometers per hour and rode 895.35 kilometers. Uh, that beat the previous record set by Marco Bello by just over four Ks. Now the monotony wasn't as bad as it sounds. Fortunately for him, he didn't have to do that on a normal velodrome, the 250 meters. He still did it on an outside track though, but on a circuit near Victoria, Australia of 3.25 kilometers round. But he still had to do 275 laps yeah. of that circuit. And the distance, well, and average speed, it's just still blowing my mind really. That average speed is nuts, isn't it? Now on to potholes, something we have our fair share of here in the UK. So They're we do. pretty annoying but not as annoying as they are over in Russia. This story is absolutely amazing. It's in the Moscow Times. So reportedly late last year, Andrei Shikin hit a pothole which was covered in snow, so he didn't see it. He broke three spokes and hit the deck himself, subsequently reported it, and then was handed a fine himself for damaging the pothole. That's just insane. I mean, cruelty to potholes. I mean, yeah. That's a new one on me. Now, Uber, who I've no doubt need no introduction to you, have acquired Dockless bike brand Jump in a deal reportedly worth, depending on which report you read, between 100 million and 200 million US dollars. Yeah, it's in that vicinity somewhere, yeah. quite a large range. It's a lot of money, isn't it? Uh, Jump's e-bikes are currently available in 40 different cities across six countries, but I'd imagine that number will grow quite, quite rapidly now that they've got that investment from Uber. Mm. Oh, you would have thought so. Now, from one performance gain to another. Now, the phrase some people never learn springs to mind in this situation because a French professional rider from Delco Marseille, Remy de Gregorio, has provided a positive sample for EPO from stage five of this year's Paranis. Yeah, the 32-year-old has previously been thrown off the Tour de France by his team at the time, Cofidis. Uh, he denied all of that doping at the time and successfully sued his team. So this kind of feels like karma, doesn't it? I hope that team gets their money back. GCN's Wiggle of Fortune. Oh, yes. Now you know the drill. There are five prizes up for mm. grabs, one of which is a free beer for me. Fingers crossed for that. Uh, and then four different Wiggle voucher amounts, ranging from prize one, which is £150, down to prize four, which is £25. Our lucky contestant this week from right in, here in the UK is Acer Bottin. Right. Take it away, Matt. Oh, it's going to be a bit of a stretch because this is a big moment, Dan. Yep. Uh, it's Three, the first press. Two, one, go. And Whoa. we are off. What's it going to be this time it's around? Spin. I think through odds, it must be close thing. to me getting my beer, but no, no, it's not straight really. past. So, what are we going to end so up with? Oh, What's it four? Just got prize. Oh, it's a three. three. Two. three. Two. It's... Oh, it's gone to the top prize oh. again. <laughs> Attention. 150 pounds of vouchers will be winging their way to you well, as soon as you can possibly get them to you, Asa. Tremendous. Uh, if you'd like to enter yourself in with a chance of being a contestant Ooh. next week, just follow the link which is in the description below this video. That was Ace, wasn't it? Get that? Ace? Ace. Oh, yeah. Hot on the heels of Oakley's new shades release that we talked about on last week's show. This time, 100% have been at it. They've released some new shades as well. Yeah, now there's something special in the nose piece of these shades. So it's dissimilar to the Oakley's because that was all about basically stopping the glasses fogging up. This is about opening up or splaying your nostrils to improve breathing and their full performance. Yes, uh, these nasal strips are nothing new in themselves, no. are they? And to the best of my knowledge, uh, the scientific jury is still out on whether they actually work or not. But nevertheless, this is the first time we've seen something like that incorporated into eyewear. Yeah, they actually work with a couple of magnets which actually stick onto your nose, roughly about here. Then you put the glasses over the top, there's other magnets on the glasses, and they actually then link in or clip via magnetic force to the ones on your nose, and you can actually adjust how much you want your, your nostrils to open or splay for a little dial. Wow. I'm mm. not sure I need my nose any bigger, if I'm perfectly honest. Or yeah, in it's fact- It's pretty optimum, isn't it, right now? I'm not sure I need my beer collection any bigger either, but I think it might be about to be. Because wow. in celebration of the upcoming Tour de Yorkshire, uh, Wharfdale Brewery, in combination with Fat Lad at the back, have made this cycling-related beer. Can't do a Yorkshire accent, Matt, so over to you. Uh, it's from Wharfdale and it's called King at Mountains Blonde. Very nice. Ah, uh, it's yeah. a blonde ale and it's 3.9%, so quite light. Felt like the back. Mm. Aye. I think we can finish now with the Yorkshire accent. You were good at it, but it's just, yeah. Although, as much as it looks very, very nice, it's not really tech, 
is it? It's just well, it's beer. a new cycling related product. It is a new cycling related product, product, but it's not take your point, though. But it looks nice. In that case, maybe we should start talking about the Mavic All Road range just released, which we mentioned at the start of the show. Yeah, Mavic have launched this new range. There's four wheel sets to be precise, uh, called the All Road, because they're not just specifically for gravel. First up is the Pro UST with a hookless design on the rim to make it easier to fit tubeless tyres, and they come in at around 1600 grams. At the next level down, we have the Elite UST which have an all aluminium hub because the Pro USTs are partly carbon. At the next level down from that, we have the All Road Elite. Uh, that one is available in 700C, but also 650B, and that's the first time Mavic have made a 650B specifically for road or gravel riders. And then at the bottom end, coming in at a very reasonable price of £225 or $300, are the All Road USTs. Yeah, now in addition to that, they've also launched a range of gravel tyres, sorry, All Road tyres. Yeah but we're going to take a closer look at those on Thursday in the Tech Show to so keep an eye out for that. We just want to say again how truly humbled we've been over the past week with your response to the GCN Cycling Club. The club is something that we're all, I think, safe to say, truly very, very excited about. We're all going to get involved and we want you to play a big part in shaping the club too. Yeah, at first the club is going to be all about top quality custom designed socks just like these. Now each founder member of the club will of course receive these unique pair of founder socks complete with the crest on the back and then every month you'll receive your regular GCN club socks. The very first wave of GCN Cycling Club socks went in the mail just before the last weekend and it's been great to see so many of you sharing your photos of your new GCN Club founders socks on Instagram already using the hashtag GCNCC. And now for some really, really good news. If you joined the GCN Cycling Club waiting list, there could be a very few select memberships Whoa. left. What that means is we'll be sending out emails to the people on the waiting list over the next few days. As soon as you get that email, you better be quick and click on the link because we just really don't have that many memberships left at this stage. If you didn't register your interest last week, We've put a link down in the description where you can sign up and be one of the first to hear about the next wave of memberships. And if you do join, when you do get your socks, make sure you share them on Instagram using the hashtag GCNCC. And thanks again for all of your support. It's been amazing. The Amstel Gold Race doesn't actually take place in the Ardennes, but strangely, it still traditionally kicks off the Ardennes Week, mm. which continues on Wednesday with La Flèche Wallonne, and then on Sunday with the oldest classic of them all, Liège Baston Liège. But both the men's and women's Amstel Gold races this year were corkers, weren't they? Yeah, they're absolutely tremendous. And in the women's race, it was World Road Race Champion Chantal Black of Bowles Domans, who on home soil took the victory, her second big win of the year, ahead of Sunweb's Lucinda Brand and Amanda Spratt of Mitchelton Scott. Yeah, in the men's race, Michael Vulgren took what was his second classic of the season, riding for Team Astana. He, of course, won Omni Pet Newsblad back in February. But it was the manner of his victory that was the most impressive, yeah. really, wasn't it? He was so cool. And four Ks to go, he attacked a very select group of riders, which included a lot of the pre race favourites, such as Alejandro Valverde, Peter Sagan, and Julian Alaphilippe. Took Kreutziger with him, who yep. he duly dispatched in the sprint. Meanwhile, just behind was double winner of the event, Enrico Gasparotto in third. Yeah, now Valgren isn't just winning big bike races, he's winning a legion of new fans. Just check out this tweet. Yeah, that was one tweet of many which came in to congratulate Michael Valgren after the race. And I really think it shows somebody's character by how many congratulatory messages you get after a race, because it doesn't happen for every race or for every rider, does it? Not at all, I think it's just why he liked. He really is a likeable chap, and as you say, it came from journalists, fellow pros, and fans alike. It's just, yeah, great to see. Right, over to the Commonwealth Games now, and last week there was a huge disappointment for young Melissa Lowther. The 21-year-old had made the 24-hour trip over to the Gold Coast of Australia to compete in the time trial, but then couldn't start because of an administrative error by Team England. Yeah, apparently they'd simply forgotten, get this, just to put a tick in a box yes. until they didn't realise until it was simply too late so she couldn't ride. But imagine travelling halfway around the world and not been able to ride. Yeah. I mean, she would have been, must have been devastated. But thankfully, she was able to compete in the road race just a couple of days later and finished a very, very credible ninth place. And that's great. That was what impressive happened. to that was... get mentally back in gear after that initial disappointment. Be Before we finish racing news, we normally leave the off-road stuff, don't we, to GMBN these days. But we've got to we've give got a massive GCN shout out to Annie Lars, sister of Tom. That was a cracking one. In fact, Tom's more like brother of Annie these days, yeah, isn't he? Officially. Uh, she got a gold medal in the women's mountain bike cross country event at the Commonwealth Games. So massive congratulations from all of us. Yeah, and there wasn't even any gurning at all. There wasn't, no. no. 
<sighs> giveaway time now and a new giveaway for our viewers this week. In fact, there'll be five lucky winners announced this time next week. Uh, SIS have provided us with these prizes and it is their endurance bundle. All the details on how to enter are in the description below this video. Yeah, now we've got three lucky winners to announce from last week's Wahoo yes. giveaway. There was an Element Bolt, an Element and an Element Mini bundle. So here they are. Andreas Butel of Germany, you've won the Element Bundle. Congratulations well to you. Next up, Kiha Lee of the United States, you won the Element Bolt Bundle. And finally, Jakob Tamschnir of the Czech Republic has won the Element Mini Bundle. Well done to all of you. We will be in touch shortly if we haven't done so already. And now, if you haven't been lucky enough yet to win one of our giveaways, you should go over to the GCN Tech channel. There we had an unboxing of Fabric's ALM saddle, and you've got a chance there to win one of those as well. It is time now for Hack, Hack Forward Slash Bodge, Bodge of the, of the week. week. Trying to sync with me now. Yeah, it's so like stereo. We'll start yeah. this week with this spotted in Hong Kong by Keith Savage. There's a lot going on here and I also have no idea what's going on here. Well, is that some kind of solar powered It's a something? solar powered system and then we've got like a flag on top of what looks like a broom. But the most impressive bit attached to the back, back of the basket is almost like a some sort of temple Blimey. going on. But I'm yeah, say quite Bodge, what are you going to say? Done. Yeah, bodge, I guess. Yes. Uh, right, next, sent in from Trent Green over on Facebook Manager Messenger. Uh, he's made a 3D printed sign to go in his bike cave. That is impressive. Yeah. That's slightly that's arrogant, but because it's got a GCN logo, I'm going to say hack. Yeah, it's a hack. It's got to be a hack, isn't it? Very well done. Uh, next up is this from William Hardage on Facebook. Um, and again, wow. a lot going on in this in this picture. But it Slow looks plow? it looks as if it's in a very cold place. Uh, but it's a chap who's adapted his bike and uh, turned it into. I think there's a little a, a place for maybe carrying hedgehogs in the back, or chickens, but, or chickens, or yeah, birds, small pets, and a snowplow on the front. Blimey. Amazing. I bet that does a decent job. Yeah. Next up is this over on in, uh, so on Facebook as well from Zach Smith. Whoa. My buddy's cantilever brake to V brake conversion hack or bud. That's amazing, isn't it? I've never seen that conversion done before. It's quite I'm, simple though, isn't it? I'm going to say bodge, but I'm pretty sure that'll work okay. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be completely functional. I don't know how safe it is, but... Uh... Next up, this from Todd Crandall. Saw this outside a coffee shop in Oban. Uh, Dad pedalled in with three toddlers in that seat. Mum shut up a few minutes later in the car. Couldn't get a picture of all three of them on the bike. Wow. I bet that's great. I don't have your three toddlers on the back of that and taking them to school or the shops. I'm not sure about the uh, structural integrity of that avalanche frame though. It looks a little bit thin, doesn't it? But no, uh, fine. I mean, a little stand probably yeah. helps a little bit, doesn't it? Kickstand is great, isn't it? Uh, Chris Evans over on Twitter. What do you think of this GCN hack? Someone was top of the class at Woodwork. Whoa! That's amazing and that's super aero as well. It looks like it's something from the 1950s, that isn't it? That is an amazing piece of woodwork right that's, there, isn't that's it? A work that's of a art. massive hack. Yeah, that is no, there's no seat tube. I mean, they, they, there's no grips on the bars there, but they look mega comfortable anyway, don't they? It looks super aero as well. And uh, this is pretty amazing. This is from Xander Griffo, who had a bit of an issue with his rear mech snapping off in the Paris Roubaix uh, Sportif. And look what he's done. He's made, he's uh, kept. Like a chain tension, yeah, out of zip ties. And then it's, that's, that in itself is attached to the front mech as well. I mean, that's remarkably simple, but it looks like that would work. Yeah, if it does work, hats off to you. Definitely. We'll get you through to the end of the sportive, let us know. Uh, if you've got any of your own hacks or bodges uh, that you would like to send us in, same as ever, it's the hashtag GCNHack, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Time now for caption competition. Last week's picture, Peter Sagan with a cobblestone on his shoulder. And the winner is Sean McNally, who said, don't be fooled by the rocks that I've got. I'm still Peter from the block. Well, he sent that in in the hope that Cy would sing it yeah. on the show, but unfortunately Cy's away at the moment. Mm. Don't be fooled by the rocks that I got. I'm still, I'm still Peter from the block. Anyway, this week's photo, oh, by the way, get in touch with us on Facebook, Sean, with your address, and we'll get this decent cam. Oh, I forgot the camelback water bottle. Go on, grabbing out the uh, the fireplace where we keep our camelback water bottles. One of these. Are, well uh, saved, actually. This there, week's though. photo is this one of Rigoberto Uran on the deck at the Amsterdam Gold Race on Sunday. I'll get you started. It took a while to get this one, didn't it? But it's a good one. Have a listen. This always happens on my cannon bail. Yeah, you set the bar. Well, it's quite intermediate level, really, I would I would suggest for that. Yeah. And I'm surely you can do a lot better. You know what to do. Leave your comments, like your captions, down below. You could I'm win sorry. a GCM bolt. Yeah, you need to apologise for that one. That was, oof, 
Before we tell you what's coming up on GCN over the next seven days, a few of our favourite comments from last week. Uh, last week, actually, we pondered whether anybody had previously done the Paru Bay Amstel double, mm. uh, whether Sagan would be the first person if he won Amstel, which he didn't, of course. Uh, Kova gave us the answer. Jan Russ, Eddie Merckx, and Bernardino have all done it before. Yeah, so how much we know. Correct, Amondo. Uh, next up is this. Some advice for you, actually, Dan, from Carter Hick. Bear with me, it's quite lengthy. Dan, your hair looks better with the side part like it was before you shaved it. You don't have to do the hard part, which can be high maintenance, just keep the top longer than the sides Blimey. and don't let it get too long. He goes on, I mean, unless you plan to use the product every day on your current setup to keep it slick and not too puffy, I think going back to the side part is something to seriously consider. <laughs> well, great uh, card for getting in contact. Uh, I'm I've sure you're going to take that advice on board. Such detailed advice yeah. in my hair before. Yeah. All right, underneath, what does it take to film an epic ride with Matt and Emma, which I thoroughly recommend you watch if you haven't done so already, uh, is this from Johan, who was loving the guy in the background ground at 1 minute 45 in. I only saw that when it ended up on YouTube. Before it, That is pretty cool. And then uh, we've got this one. Yeah. From Michael McDermott. That was underneath how to corner with confidence, Michael yeah. McDermott. I love it when stripey seniors show us how it's done. Magic. Stripey senior. Yeah, well, he likes the fact that you've got your stripes and so is Emma. Anyway, there we go. On the channel this week, now on Wednesday, we've got how not to ride steep climbs. On Thursday, we asked the pros what they do if they weren't professional cyclists. A couch potato. A DJ. Be like some kind of adventure guide. And on Friday, it's Ask Juicy Anything. On Saturday, Emma continues her series showing you how to train on your commute. This time, it's hill reps. She's a real glutton for punishment. She likes Emma, to climb, she? Yeah. Sunday, we've then got my tour of the Ceramic Speed Factory over in Denmark, which I hope you find very interesting. Uh, Monday, we're back with the Racing News Show, and Tuesday, back here in the set. It's time now, Dan, for Extreme Corner. Where's your X? Yeah. Come on, get your X uh, Yeah, this week's was suggested by a friend over at GMBN, Blake Sampson. Uh, this is his friend, Adolf Silver, doing his stuff. Off for takeoff! <laughs> oh my goodness. Dan, that's, the, in the mouth, oh, that. that's the first time I think in history anybody has nailed perfectly an SSS GF. Yeah, well, and for those of you not as cool as Matt and I that don't know what that means, that is the Super Surf Saddle Grab Flip. First time that's ever been done. How impressive is that? Ooh. Well, that's the end of this week's GCN show. Uh, don't forget to, forget to give us your opinions on gravel riding. Do you do it? If so, why do you do it? And if you don't, why don't you? And how about heading just down here to see what it takes to film a GCN epic ride? <laughs>